Good morning, everyone. Hey, good morning. Uh, good morning. Yeah, it's uh, it's my pleasure hosting you today. Maybe it's early in uh, in some uh, countries, and the others it's uh, like uh, before uh, midday. Uh, the uh, I hope uh, that everyone's gonna. Um, anyone have any question? Please just um, put it in uh, uh, on the comments, and I'll be covering it. And on the other side, the session is uh, uh, not, not oriented to a single software, but also will be highlighting uh, uh, a general technology. So please feel free to ask any uh, questions related to digital twin, reality modeling, or even uh, context capture software, which is uh, uh, going to be under focus. I think now my uh, screen is clear. Please mute your... Uh, microphone just to make sure that there is no echo or noise. So about, briefly about geomatics, uh, we are a system integrator focused on geointelligence. We provide our customers with full-fledged uh, uh, array of applications focusing on uh, different at, uh, sectors or maybe various sectors like um, oil and gas, uh, urban planning, uh, and also we do cover uh, uh, surveying as a main uh, core. But this, and because surveying already um, serve many, many uh, sectors or maybe all in engineering disciplines, this makes geomatics and through reality modeling an optimum solution for digitization and uh, upgrading capabilities for different uh, sectors. So, about context capture, context capture is a software provided from Bentley Systems, the leading uh, uh, digital engineering uh, provider. Uh, context capture is a photogrammetry based software uh, which based on pixel recognition uh, in multiple photos in which it could generate a 3D model. So you can see the object from different perspectives and then the error triangulation is done by the software and also the reconstruction of the model itself. And at the end, you could see a 3D model and reality modeling of what you are uh, Studying. So I just share now. An example for us to For those who didn't saw a reality model before to be with us on the same frequency. This is a reality model for a substation. It's done using different methodologies from ground imaging through a camera and also aerial photogrammetry through an unmanned air vehicle. You could see some details which could be very, very shocking for some of us that you could get details you could even read this plate with all information why is this necessary for many businesses because this could save you from going to the site could save time could save money and also many stakeholders could share their thoughts and their decisions over the model. If there is an emergency, maybe the guy from the field would raise the problem or maybe the sensor, which is already installed on this pump or on this uh, 
cooling unit will raise an alarm and then another engineer from the office would be able to see uh, what about uh, how, how to solve this problem and he might uh, realize that maybe one of the one of the components need to be changed and he can identify what is uh, uh, which vendor would be able to help if this part is in stock or whatever so the, the problem could be solved in minutes before it's more complicated Another example from oil and gas industry. We could see this complete refinery or distillation facility modeled in one mouse click in front of the user. So we could do some calculations for any uh, volumetric calculation we may need, any distance measurements we may need, it could be done in seconds. I just pressed, uh, pressed here on this icon for measurements. In less than 20 seconds, I'll be having an accurate coordination for the whole site. I could press now in any point, maybe this elbow here, I will get very accurate easting and northing and mean T level. And this is 100% surveying solution, which means that I could switch between different special reference systems and I could still get the accuracy in my local coordinate system. We could do some volumetric calculation to see if we need to add another tank here and to see if if the area is is okay and if the uh, uh, cotton uh, and fill volumes are within the standards for the alignment we, we need. So, in general, this application allows us to model whatever we need at, 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 our, at, at, uh, at different levels of size and accuracy. So this is a perspective behind the, uh, the concept itself. And also we could add more accuracy because uh, the acquisition is one of the most important or maybe it's the key for a successful uh, reality modeling project and also key for a successful processing. So now when we import the images, maybe if they are not acquired in a uh, uh, a correct uh, uh, algorithm or, or pattern, the software would not be able to use its, uh, its artificial intelligence to do the error triangulation and uh, the uh, reconstruction. We could use photos, maybe mounted on a camera or in my hand, you know. Uh, uh, one, of the, one of the common mistakes that reality modeling or, uh, or this technology is just logged into uh, uh, drones or into aerial uh, platforms. Because you can use your normal camera or even your laser scanner because we still have a hybrid mode in which you can merge both uh, accuracies from, uh, special accuracy from the uh, imaging and the point cloud accuracy from the laser scanner. But you still could use ground tools to acquire a very, very accurate and maybe more accurate model than from an aerial perspective. Also, you still could use different data sources according to the technology you already have or you are using or to the workflow which is already uh, adopted in your uh, organization, starting from mobile mapping systems passing by large oblique cameras for manned uh, 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 airborne vehicles like Ultracam, like Leica, like Trimble, like different companies who are providing those giant cameras to model cities. Passing by Regal, in which you could get the most accurate LiDAR data on the planet. And then you could go to simple Phantom 4 uh, or Phantom 4 Pro 
uh, drone, which could cost you less than eighteen hundred dollars, and you could still get a very very accurate uh, 3D model, but you still to do some ground control points. Or if, you, or if you're lucky to get the uh, real-time kinematic version of this drone, you will be doing a very good job with a very limited budget project. So we can see mobile mapping systems, we can see fixed wings with belly landing, we can see uh, some uh, cameras uh, uh, flying in the air via some dedicated drones. So sky zero is the limit. The uh, uh, Bentley and context capture, especially after increasing the limit of the point cloud by uh, into a single project for the desktop version into three billion points, are now unlimiting any uh, capabilities uh, for uh, the teams working with the software to be able to import their data and to put it all in one source and then get the different accuracies according to their needs. Some examples and best practices for uh, uh, for acquisition because this is maybe uh, uh, from my perspective this is a, a technology this is a barrier about this technology uh, uh, this is a problem which makes people not very confident about using uh, reality modeling or using uh, photogrammetry softwares it's acquisition so okay the software is very smart it could do everything for me but how can I get the data set accurate enough to be able to get this, those results so those acquisition Techniques vary from application to the other. They, uh, they vary according to the level of detail I need, the nature of the object itself, the orientation itself, the accessibility. So, but as a concept, we should focus on the overlap. So here, I, from my perspective, I did overlap because I'm taking so much image, images. But the overlap depends on the, uh, the, uh, the focus, uh, focal length of the camera which means that the coverage maybe here is not allowing me to do any kind of overlap. Those are just some single photos. But here when I decreased the space between different photos and uh, I successfully got an overlap. Maybe this overlap is just a theoretical example, but it's not enough because we should get more than 60 to 80% to be able to do reality model. Of course, let's overlap we could still use for some application like also photo or uh, uh, productive uh, pr uh, producing uh, uh, 2D maps, but we are here to speak about 3D reality model. Same example here. So there are some constraints and we are here to discuss the technology, not the software itself. Uh, maybe this is one of the most capable softwares in the world among, uh, uh, among users, uh, uh, but again, there is technology limitations in the photogrammetry itself, which means that any shiny and transparent and reflective surfaces would hinder me from doing my job. Uh, we need to use different tricks. So with the glass and the mirrors, we could use filters with the camera. Uh, and also for uh, uh, areas in which there is no, uh, not too much objects for me to do the rec reconstruction, we could use more ground control points. So in a poor texture or no texture uh, or no textured surfaces, I would face some difficulties, but it still have some uh, 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 tricks to be sold. Here, uh, as an example, we can see this river uh, for this space is now in the update, I think in update 15 in context capture, was sold with that the software automatically recognized the problem and it could fill this surface. So now you started to have help from the development team to solve your common uh, pitfalls or the technology pitfalls. But again, uh, 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 from during the acquisition, if you didn't take care and if you didn't know those limitations, you will not be able to mitigate those uh, uh, limitations in the office. So you should be aware about those limitations, and then you can you could be able to solve them. You can import more, uh, uh, import the images from any camera, and you can import uh, li lidar data or point cloud data from any laser scanner or lidar system. So uh, it's, it's up to you, starting from your mobile, professional camera, drone, or even airborne uh, uh, 
camera assistant. So we are here speaking about overlap from between 80 and 60 percent. And this overlap should not only be a forward lap, it also should be a side lap because you don't want to see your model from a side perspective. You need to see it in a 3D mode. So all the four faces of any cube should be very uh, uh, similar in accuracy. In this case, you should save a consistent overlap and side lap from 60 to 80 percent and again you need to do the calculations according to your camera resolution according to your uh, uh, lens used and of course this will impact the height you will be using in case of uh, aerial photogrammetry and in case of close range photogrammetry this will be impacting the distance you are using as an example and when we speak about at least 70%, we are speaking about maintaining 60 to 80%. Also, one of the most interesting uh, points to be covered uh, in this session is the consistency of the imaging. So if you are taking image from different angles or from different depth which means different height or different uh, uh, distance from your perspective try to make them consistent and if consistent and if you are taking too close images like this and too far images please make sure that you do another round which enables the software to connect between this data set and this data set and also if you are having images from different perspectives which means that I'm using my mobile camera or, or my uh, uh, normal uh, camera or my professional camera from the ground. And then I decided to take an oblique imagery or an ideal imagery from the top with my drone. Please make sure to have another run to be able to fuse this plane with this plane together through this overlapping oblique imagery. So in this case, you are helping the software to match pictures together and also to keep the consistency and to keep the accuracy of the model itself. Here you can use your mobile phone camera to take images, so maybe the overlapping angles, to get an overlapping pictures, you shouldn't use angles more than 15 degree to be able to generate a nice model. So now when we are speaking about drones, there are a lot of models, you know, from the very simple uh, Phantom, uh, uh, DJI Phantom 4 uh, drones, passing by those Sony cameras mounted on uh, uh, Falcon uh, camera, Falcon drone, sorry. And on the other side, you could also use a fixed wing. Maybe uh, it's now using Nadir only, but very, very, very soon we will be uh, seeing uh, combined Nadir and oblique cameras on those fixed wings and on normal cam uh, and on, on normal uh, uh, quadcopters. Uh, so you will be able to take both Nadir and oblique photogrammetry in the same uh, flight line, which will save a lot of time. So because you need to take images with different angles to be able to get. A better reality model so you need to fly many times so i'll be flying if i have one camera and one lens on the drone i'll be flying with nadir and then uh, 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 30 degrees to the right and then 30 degrees to the uh, left and to the front and to the back so i'll be i need to fly five times or if i have those five cameras mounted on those five directions on the drone i'll be very happy because i'm gonna fly once I'll be sharing, uh, for surveying, we are uh, always connected to technology. And technology never stops developing every, every day. So um, I was uh, sharing this to show you those new oblique cameras. We are just speaking about this is a company from China. They were working on their uh, 
a product for very, very uh, extensive uh, R&D exercise. Uh, maybe I was monitoring them uh, through the past two years, and now they started to have a well-tested and calibrated product. Now you could mount this camera over your drone. They have different uh, models which could be mounted to different drones, and you don't have to fly the five times. You could only fly once. And then here's your Nadir uh, 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 data set. And here come the other four data sets for the oblique photograph. And you will be able to get per single point, you will be able to get 201 megapixels of data, which means that you will get five images with uh, the total of 201 megapixels camera. Of course, every one of them is kind of, 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 of uh, it's, it's, it's around uh, uh, 40 megapixels. But again, the amount of data which will be captured from one perspective is huge, which will save you time, and again will result in a longer processing time and a very accurate model. And here is uh, the point in which you could rely on context capture. Other uh, uh, solutions maybe is not very um, clever on uh, on such big data sets and big scale projects. And we will see this later. They still have uh, accessories in which you could mount the camera on different uh, platforms. And they, up, uh, they also updated their solution to be compatible with the new Matrice 300 uh, workhorse. Another introduction, uh, it was introduced maybe since 18 months and is very, very effectively uh, spreading over uh, surveying uh, uh, markets, is Phantom 4 RTK. It's a normal uh, DJI uh, and classical uh, model of Phantom, but again, it's very, very unique because it got a real-time kinematic dual channel sensor installed on top of it and it comes if you bought the combo it comes with a surveying grade a global navigation satellite systems base station in which you could use to get live corrections or maybe post-processed corrections to your uh, imagery and then you can process directly with uh, two to five centimeters accuracy always uh, for us not to get bluffed with data coming from uh, different uh, marketing materials from vendors, uh, when we speak about one centimeter, he mean plus or minus one centimeter, which means two centimeters. And again, in the vertical accuracy, it's always less than the horizontal accuracy. So when you're, and also you should ask yourself, okay, this is now about the GPS accuracy. What about the geospatial, uh, the spatial accuracy of the camera itself I'm using because the, uh, according to different heights, you will be able to get different uh, image qualities and a ground sampling distance. So again, you should focus on, on how many meters are you flying and this will be impacting your ground sampling distance. And then you can combine with the data coming from your GPS and then you will have an absolute horizontal or uh, uh, vertical accuracy. Uh, we speak here about a ground station uh, RTK uh, application which is mounted uh, on your remote controller uh, screen. You don't have to get any software from third party to do your flight planning. You have very long range, you have your base station, you, you, you have a complete solution in which you can you could uh, generate very, very nice models with uh, very cheap, it's less than $10,000 with all the accessories needed and all the batteries which make you fly for two or three hours. The sensor itself is uh, mechanical shutter, not a global one, which means that you will get better uh, calibrated images with, with less uh, spherical errors. And it's built for surveyors, but anyone can use it. This is the point here, that the technology is not only limited for experts now, 
even you as an engineer or even if you're not an engineer from any other sector, you could easily make use of the uh, technology evolution by using such platform, easy to fly, and this uh, and also a, a very clever software like context capture to, uh, to change the uh, way you are working in your industry. One of the other companies which is really interesting uh, when it comes to R&D, uh, Quantum System. They are a German, cam uh, German uh, uh, UAV uh, maker. They have different models. But let's speak uh, about their surveying models. They have the Trinity F9. This, uh, this platform could fly for 90 minutes with a Sony RX1 camera with 42 megapixels. It could uh, produce you uh, stunning, you know, maybe more than five or six square kilometers per flight with very, 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 very good accuracy and very good uh, uh, ground sampling distance. Uh, we still have also the uh, LiDAR option uh, through the Tron. The Tron is a more uh, rugged uh, platform in which you can mount any sensor you need because it could take up to two kilometers so you can add your Sony camera, you could add your phase one camera, you could still add your, your LiDAR system. They are, have integration with yellow scan. So you have here a Planet system, you have Velodyne system, and you have uh, uh, the drone and with the software, everything in one package. So sky's your limit when you want to uh, go for a project with high accuracy LiDAR data. You can see the vertical takeoff. It's a fixed wing, but it can take off vertically and it still can get back to its takeoff location vertically. Which save time. You don't have to go to the airport to, uh, to put it on the track. It saves the equipment itself saves the calibration because no need for catapults and also no need for using your hand throwing the drone because uh, uh, it may uh, you may w one day you may fail okay and also in the other uh, side it doesn't use any parachute it doesn't use any belly landing it lands safely with your sensor and your data one of the interesting points that here we have to use only one base station, but sometimes we need to check because we are using RTK and PPK technologies, of course. But sometimes we need to check ourselves. We need to know, are we still uh, getting the same accuracies we are expecting or it is, uh, there is something wrong? So I need to take some uh, ground uh, station, uh, ground control points to make, to check about my accuracy and to get better feel of uh, what is the project going there. We have a very, very nice uh, solution from Aplanex and Trimble. Uh, it's a smart, uh, the smart target. Those smart targets, you don't have to do anything. You just throw them in the field. They have a GNSS uh, uh, dual channel. They start to log data and they will be already uh, recognized during processing through a plugin and you are good. You don't have to uh, put the target and then you need to uh, make some changes uh, in your workflow to, uh, uh, to, to, to get the accurate uh, coordinates of those targets to be imported uh, as a ground control point to your model. So it's, it's, it's just done directly. And of course, for laser scanning, if you need to use a laser scanner, the rest is because now we covered LiDAR and photogrammetry. So also laser scanning, uh, one of the nice examples uh, is there an F, they are leading in their industry. This laser scanner, the 50 is the 5016, also uh, is a fully autonomous, uh, uh, versatile platform in which there is no need for registration. Uh, there is an IMU and there is automatic registration process, so you can mount your you, you can mount your uh, um, system uh, uh, on the uh, tripod, and you will be getting direct registration with the previous station through the Blue Workflow technology, in which you can use one scanner 
or two scanners on the same project, on the same tablet, and you could run in the field and you don't have to do any kind of ground network and you don't have to get any GPS with you if you are having already uh, a, a, a geo-referenced uh, ground control point previously uh, available. You don't have to do it again in the field. You will get 100% registered point cloud. Let's get back to our presentation. So now we had a, a glance about some technologies we might use. Or what are the technology updates? How can I do my uh, 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 photogrammetry job or my surveying job with less effort and with high accuracy? For some, uh, uh, platforms which doesn't have uh, any uh, planning software like the Phantom 4 RTK, uh, you might be able to use any third party application like Drone Harmony, like uh, Drone Deploy, like uh, uh, Pix Capture, like uh, maybe uh, DJI Terra. So you will be able to do that in a very, very, very accurate manner because it's going to be done autonomously. And also, if you don't have any experience in flying drones, Feel safe to fly your drone through one of those softwares. Uh, of course, you should take care of the battery level, you should take care of the wind, you should take care of other aspects about uh, uh, there is no uh, animals around you, there is no kids, uh, you are controlling uh, uh, the area you are taking off and getting back, and also there is no uh, uh, high trees in your flight path or, or, or buildings. But you still could do the job if you are not a uh, hundred uh, uh, percent cable to fly a drone you can still do the job by some training so those softwares enable you to use the technology some tricks if you want to take a reality model please don't get very very close and and get also the uh, uh, maybe more than 50 percent or 40 percent of the image is gonna be a sky as a sky try to use an angle in which you are getting some features to add texture to your uh, image and for data acquisition best practices as we mentioned before that we need to take images from different angles if we are uh, uh, interested in a point of interest which will be mapped so we take three uh, we took three circular uh, overlapping rounds and then we are doing an intersecting grid to be able to cover both nadir and oblique perspectives for all objects because and at the end i'll be able to get a very accurate model this is an example so we took an nadir imagery and then we took some manual photos here because if this shape is not regular, uh, so you, you will not be able to use a, as a circular uh, workflow. It's always depend on the object itself and it depends on your experience and your decision in the field to be able to get a very nice uh, model at the end. Here we have a bridge, so you need to cover the bridge from downwards. And you could use your own professional camera and you can use the stairs to get the perspective from high. So it differs, you know, it, this is an this is example to show you how could we use images to generate the model. And here, if you are uh, uh, on a city scale mapping, it's much more preferable to use those merged Nadir and Oblique cameras. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm waiting them for maybe the more than three years to be available on UAVs because this will uh, will impact the industry of city modeling heavily because uh, to be able to, to cover large areas, you will not uh, have the option to fly twice or three times or maybe five times to get Nadiran or oblique data sets. But if you can get it once, it will be very 
very good. I'd like to share some models. So we could get more uh, near to uh, different applications. This is a very interesting uh, 3D model for uh, Valley. You can see details. So here you can use this application maybe for mining, maybe for excavation for uh, uh, monuments, maybe to extend uh, or to uh, uh, establish a, a power grid uh, network. Here's another example for mining. You could very, very, get very, very accurate data sets. You can even recognize the footprint of the tires. And easily you could make any volumetric calculation for any pile. For example, this one, you could just do this. And you could get the volume of this pile to be able to plan for your number of trucks which need to come to cover to, to, to for you to remove those uh, products from the ground and also you could plan for your mine and for the whole road and also artificial intelligence now could get you many uh, valuable data for such application like those uh, brick lines or, uh, like uh, before using explosives in this area we need to do calculation and after the uh, using the explosives we need to do the calculation to see how many ore do we need to rem remove and how many trucks do i need uh, tomorrow to to be able to contact my contractors so it's very very important to use such uh, technology. One of the most interesting applications is city modeling. And here we can see uh, this uh, main part of Philadelphia modeled on, uh, I have uh, uh, an old computer, this is a three years old uh, outdated computer, it's not the uh, most powerful one. Now you have a 3D reality model for the whole city with very, very, very good resolutions. Municipalities and uh, facility owners and uh, maybe uh, different uh, 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 authorities and uh, ministries could use such data very 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 effectively because this give you control over the city you know you can you can you can easily plan for uh, any kind of maintenance you can uh, recognize the cracks which is available and you can merge of course with mobile mapping to, to get more accurate data from the ground you could uh, you could monitor the progress of uh, uh, on any project, you know, now you can see the, this project under construction. This is this is a newly developed uh, developed area, and this building maybe is about to finish. So you could still monitor the development, uh, monitor the safety concerns. You can monitor the uh, urban uh, planning consistency with the other buildings. So sky is the limit when you are thinking about the applications of such technology, and. For city modeling, I, maybe I still have uh, 10 minutes before uh, we start to uh, reply questions. Uh, I'll be sharing another uh, example of how can we use reality model in different applications. So those slides will speak about smart cities.
to be able to have a smart city, you should have a very that's not connected with the buildings and the facilities. You're not you're not going to make the out use of them as a maximum use of it. Also for energy networks, water uh, renewable energy or uh, storm uh, uh, rain uh, emergency networks. Also, you still get them connected to each other, or you will start getting problems like this. You know, someone who is uh, doing any maintenance in any network, he could easily hit the other one to make a problem like this. Also, this will generate a, a flood. And on the other side, if you don't have, you are not, and you still have a storm, uh, 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 a storm network uh, capability to uh, to compensate this water, but it's, they are not integrated together. They will not. Uh, your your heavily invested uh, asset will not be used on time. So you still have a lot of question mark when you have a disconnected infrastructure. But when you have a connected infrastructure, you will be able to integrate all those networks together, uh, and you will be able to use them over the reality mode. How can we use that? Small example here, that maybe uh, maybe we could take a, take, a, uh, take a glance about Bentley solutions here because. We are speaking about one of the most, maybe uh, well, the biggest uh, technology provider for uh, digital engineering and uh, infrastructure uh, uh, solutions for different sectors. We speak about mining, water and wastewater. We speak about uh, uh, city development, nuclear power, bridges, power plants, process plants, wind farms, rail uh, and road construction, utilities. We have a playbooks of softwares which could cover all engineering direction. And um, all those solutions are based on MicroStation, the first CAD in the world, and also using project-wise and asset-wise, you could still have a consistent workflow over a connected data environment in which you could make sure that your project is designed uh, uh, respecting uh, BIM standards and during construction and uh, 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 during uh, planning you will be able to use existing uh, uh, reality models uh, not, not to get disconnected the office disconnected from the field so uh, you start to get problems when you go to the field and start implementation and after having your assets uh, uh, built you will be able to manage it uh, uh, through uh, performance uh, management uh, monitoring uh, uh, capabilities and also uh, maintenance and asset integrity uh, management tools. The data you, we, you, uh, we are all using, uh, maybe uh, it, is, it falls on those uh, four uh, directions, transportation, road or rail or bridge, energy, whatever the source is and the tools used to use it or to generate it. And uh, water, which is one of the most important infrastructure components in any city. And those buildings, our homes, uh, ministries, airports, uh, municipalities, and everything. So <clears throat> this data is already designed and already maintained through different technologies. <clears throat> we, cannot, uh, we cannot depend on a single source. So some of us use Isri, the others use Bentley. Maybe uh, a lot of users prefer Autodesk for their CAD drawing. When you are uh, when you are respecting new uh, OGC and open uh, platform standards, you should also uh, uh, <clears throat> you should also respect uh, uh, IFC, in which different engineering technology data sources could be found in any complex solution. We could put all of them on our reality mesh. So all this data from different sources will be overlaid on the city model, which is a reality model, 3D accurate model, geo-coordinated, and then you can do a lot of things. Also, you could use data coming from any uh, uh, operational technology sensors like SCADA, like uh, IoT, like uh, a simple uh, flow meter in your facility we, or a simple temperature uh, sensor which could tell you that the temperature is going very high now and you can use any IT infrastructure to run all this environment and at the end you will be 
uh, able to connect with any ERP, and you could see the results on any Bentley application or even any third-party application. So you don't have to use Bentley data from the beginning, and you don't have to use a Bentley platform at the end. You you still could use all those data data uh, data sources on a reality model. We will see now an example, and at the end you will be having a virtual city. So to plan this bridge, you can easily do reality model for the area itself, and you will start doing conceptual design over the existing conditions. Also for this metro, <coughs> metro project, it's always very difficult, <coughs> excuse me, it's always very different to uh, to plan uh, metro station and a metro project or a rail uh, underground project in an existing city because you are now challenging all the infrastructures which has already have been built over decades. But with reality modeling, you can plan this easily because you could put your CAD drawings over the existing uh, as-built drawings and also you can respect different other uh, aspects which will ensure your success at the end. So we can use the technology during planning, design, construction, and operation. Also, every data source, so now maybe the energy or the Ministry of Electricity is using Small World from GE and they are using Bentley. Uh, people from the uh, GIS and the municipality are using ISRI. And uh, one of the uh, building uh, developers is using Autodesk or Bentley or maybe IFC. So how can we uh, put data all together? We could keep the data sources and their destination because every data owner don't want to uh, share his data uh, to the other parties, but we could study a specific area and we could access a specific layer of data after uh, permitting this uh, user to access this data temporarily. And at the end, we can deploy everything on the reality mesh. And of course, you can use this in Bentley environment and also in third party environment. Now we have our reality model overlaid with information and data, and we can do a different level of GIS analysis. You know, before before closing this uh, whole of the maintenance project, you could make a reality model using a mobile phone, and you can attach this file to this uh, area with a timestamp. And then, after maybe five or ten years, you can come back and open this model to see what was done before and what was the condition of the other uh, infrastructure. And you don't have to do this anymore to start to planning from the above the ground because you will have a full underground perspective with the footprint of every building and different infrastructures with different layers of accuracy because maybe those red ones are not validated uh, but the blue ones are already uh, validated through a ground penetrating radar or an accurate as built modeling. Also, fluid analysis, one of the uh, model, one of the very necessary, uh, very important uh, applications uh, now being uh, adopted by many cities because of the global warming and the weather changes and the various amounts of water which could uh, hit any uh, any area. So uh, I would love to receive some uh, questions, please, uh, if uh, um... okay. first, uh, first, if you want to receive a, to make sure we send you the recording this session, please make sure to register in the link that I have attached the link in the chatting box. Okay. Uh, one of our questions we have uh, uh, she's asking about the uh, 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 
issues. Okay. Um, Engineer Mohammed Zal, do you have a category of drones like surveying drones without re remind model of uh, drones or company? <laughs> so maybe I'm not getting the question, Mohammed. Um, all the drones we already highlighted were our surveying drones because uh, Phantom 4 RTK, uh, having the RTK capability is uh, is making this drone a very, very valuable surveying tool because you can get the direct georeferencing from the base station or even from virtual reference station or continuous operating reference station. So you still could get the same uh, accuracy. Okay. Uh, is any uh, any closed model for uh, steel structure available? Okay, steel structure now. Um, yes, we have. Uh, we have a model for steel structure. I can um, I can I can show. Uh, but again, maybe it's more uh, into CAD modeling through other softwares and not context capture. So uh, context capture here is to fuse because for, for steel photogrammetry is not enough because it's first it's shiny. And uh, according to the application you need, of course, sometimes if you just need to, to have the real feel, uh, photogrammetry is uh, okay, but steel is, is always, uh, you, you can have thickness which is less than uh, maybe two centimeters, which means that you need to get very, very, very near from the object to be to have a very high GSD to be able to represent those objects. And also at the end, using a simple laser scanner will be more very uh, will be will be more efficient. So there is another Bentley software in which you can import the point cloud, and and uh, uh, one of them is uh, context capture also, but context capture editor. Which merge, which merge different uh, features of Descartes and MicroStation. So um, I have a model, but it's not on this computer, and it's uh, it's big. It's, it was done for uh, one of the uh, uh, big um, exhibition areas, and I'll be sharing it with you, Mohammed. We have. Uh, the question uh, what 3d tower mounted cameras can uh, we recommend i think uh, 3d tower mounted cameras there are some uh, some direct solutions uh, uh, from pix 4 d uh, it, it could be used because it's already integrated with uh, with the software but it's very far uh, it's not a mental solution uh, and on the other side if you want to uh, mount a camera you could get a special mount and you can use any camera since you have access to trigger this camera on a timely basis so uh, uh, in general you uh, uh, could do that but uh, this camera will be a fixed camera unless it's fixed on a crane so uh, uh, of course this uh, in some areas you are not allowed to fly a drone but again the drone perspective is much much better if you need to get results which is enabling you to use it for reality modeling and 3D modeling construction. We have another question here. Uh, yes, Inspire 2 with uh, uh, Zen News uh, X5. Uh, it's going to be a perfect tool. It has only one pitfall. That's not a mechanical shutter. It's a global shutter, but still could do it because this is an, an over 20 megapixel sensor and Inspire 2 is a very, very capable drone. So yes, you can use your Inspire 2. Please feel free to send me a request and we will, uh, we, we could work uh, something for you. Maybe you could also, we can guide you with the acquisition and uh, you could process the uh, your project, uh, uh, the cloud because Context Capture provide uh, mobile uh, application processing. We provide, uh, cloud service we provide uh, center capabilities for huge data centers and also desktop application uh, please feel free to also share with us wh what do you need uh, in our next uh, session because we are planning a series of sessions to uh, to cover this uh, uh, reach uh, software and uh, its capabilities so we uh, we could dedicate a session for acquisition techniques we could dedicate a session for the acquisition technologies itself and also for a different uh, processing options. And we could also provide uh, 
uh, separate detailed uh, training uh, uh, need, uh, if needed uh, in the case of purchasing the software. For uh, long distance, uh, this is a very tricky question because what do you mean by long distance? So any drone uh, uh, can we use uh, uh, for long distance? Yes, but you will lose the accuracy because uh, the one pixel of your sensor will be seeing a larger area on the ground. So at the end, uh, 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 the sampling capability will decrease and you will get a less accurate model. But, uh, but, but of course, if you are using better lens, uh, this will be helping you to uh, get a more uh, focused image, but uh, take care of parallax. So it's like an equation. So there are already cameras now, uh, for, for long uh, distance and long altitude, but those are designed for airborne uh, platforms and for uh, unmanned uh, air vehicles. Uh, we speak, um, my advice is not to fly over 200 or 300 meters uh, uh, because this, uh, this will uh, impact your uh, accuracy. Okay, another question here uh, asking if we can attach a GPS on a drone and work uh, from there. Yes, you can. There are some solutions uh, from Cloud PPK and we also provide those solutions. According to the model of your camera, we can integrate a PPK uh, sensor into it, but it's not the normal GPS. You should have something which is calibrated. You should calibrate uh, the uh, camera with uh, a center uh, of the antenna to be able to get uh, the, the accuracy, or you will not be making use of your investment. And yes, some drones like um, Inspire 2, unlike also Mavic and DJI, uh, you can do this. And for other fixed wings, it's much, much better to buy them uh, already equipped. But um, now, after the introduction of drones like Phantom 4 RTK, you don't have to do this because you can buy it ready and calibrated from the factory, which will save you time and effort and also uh, accuracy. Okay, I think we already covered uh, the questions. We would love uh, uh, to get uh, feedback from your side about this session. And if you, uh, if you have any interest for another topics to be covered, and uh, thank you very much.